Today we are going to be going over the remora in the waistband holsters. Now when I am asked to give advice on holsters, typically I will say that a holster should be fit uh, to the gun that the person wants to carry and I really generally discourage your one size fits all or your one size fits most holsters. Um, the Remora holsters are your one size fits many holsters. I don't want to say one size fits all or one size fits most because there are definitely some, um, you know, different sizing, which is good. The, the more fit, the better, um, but I'll go into that a little bit more. And, but when asked to do a review on a product like this, a holster reviewer such as myself really has to open up their, I guess, open up their mind and kind of set aside their biases and do the best they can to be fair, not only to their viewers, but also to the people who are asking them to review. Yes, I did get these holsters for free. A lot of people uh, say that I should mention whether or not I get a holster for free or not. And I agree, I'm not trying to be sneaky or anything like that. These holsters were sent to me from Remora to review under the understanding that I do not, um, you cannot buy my holster review basically. I do my holsters very honestly, my holster reviews very honestly, and if I don't like a feature, I will be sure to point it out. So with that, we can go ahead and get started with the remoras. Uh, as you can see, I just have two models here. I was actually quite shocked at how many different holsters that remora sent to me. Um, for different types of guns. I pretty much told him the types of guns that I typically carry thinking he'd send me just one for that particular model, but he ended up sending me several different including a, um, a magazine pouch, which I'll be going over all these kinds of things during the course of the review. But starting out, basically what is a remora holster? Um, these are what are considered a friction holster meaning there is no clip, there is no kind of belt attachment, there is no attachment device of any type on these holsters. The friction of the material between the body and the waistband of the garment is what keeps the holster in place. Now the Remora holsters are made of a rubber type, a rubberized and non-slip fabric. And one of the things that I think is kind of neat and I like about this and I'm going to zoom in here and see if I can get it, is it has this kind of pod-like rubberized, which lets, it lets moisture and air kind of move throughout the material so it's, it can stay a little bit more sticky instead of just being solid rubber, which could be a little irritating. The inside is just a nylon type of holster. And this particular number two holster is designed for your small 380 type firearms like this SIG 238 replica that I have here. It has a closed bottom, which of course means that if you get any moisture inside here, it does not, it cannot vent. You're not gonna have any, any opportunities to have air flow through there. If you have um, any sand or debris or anything that gets in there, it's gonna stay in there. So you're gonna wanna have to you know, make sure that you check the inside of your holster, wipe it out if you need to, make sure it's nice and dry because you don't want, you know, you don't want moisture to really build up the, in there and then keep a holster in there for a long time and end up with rust problems or other type of issues. So just, you know, making sure that you take that out there. But because this is sturdy, just nylon and, and rubber, it can wipe dry very quickly. And something that's also very nice with this type of a holster is since the, the non-slip qualities of it are this rubber, what can happen with rubber is when it gets dirty or dusty, it starts to lose its stickiness. So just taking a wet washcloth um, and just wiping off that excess dirt just instantly refreshes its stickiness and makes it very sticky. And if it's really dirty, you can dilute the water, which is a little bit of rubbing alcohol, very little bit. You don't want to start to degrade or dry out the rubber to the point where it starts cracking. 
but um, you know you would you want to respect the properties of rubber but just something to clean it off a little extra maybe a gentle soap and there you have completely fixed your your stick issues they can accommodate crimson trace grips and you really have to look on their holster uh, on their um, their holster website list you'd get a different holster for maybe your 380s that have um, the big laser attachment on the front and the like so it's not one size fits all or one size fits you know a, a vast number so and I like that because the more fit the better something that some people always look for is the fact of whether or not something has a reinforced mouth now because these holsters come in different varieties there is the what they call is the um, RFT holsters which do have a reinforced mouth it's just a band of plastic that's between the nylon and the the rubber outer and it keeps the mouth of the holster open um, there are also models that are called the SS models like this one here which stands for sweat shield model and this will you know as you can see it comes up over the entire firearm and protects it a little bit more protects your body from this you know and, and the gun from the sweat something like this this is not a sweat shield model it's a little bit more out there and this this is the sweat shield model for this 380 type firearm here um, this one but it's not reinforced you can get some that are reinforced you can get others that aren't now one thing that does change in this one is it it's a little harder to get a grip on this one because it's so small and it's kind of buried inside the holster there so if you really didn't care too much about whether or not it had the sweat shield you could go with something like this the regular where you can get a much much better grip on it naturally now obviously by the very nature of these holsters as far as adjustability the holster itself cannot be adjusted but you have endless possibilities for adjusting this whether it be left-handed right-handed forward cant uh, rearward cant um, up higher in your waistband down lower in your waistband the pretty much your the sky is your limit and the imagination is all you know you can put them in your pocket you can um, they, they have specific pocket holsters these aren't specifically made for pocket holsters but you could certainly do that if you needed to um, the magazine pouch is kind of a universal magazine pouch I have a single stack magazine in here and a double mag double stack magazine in here just to show you the versatility of the magazine pouch and of course you can see from all of these holsters that there is no active retention device it's just a very uh, just an open top holster nothing to really keep the firearm except for just natural you know the natural pressure and one thing that does help keep the firearm in place is the fact that the the rubberized material does wrap around the inside you can kind of see it there where the nylon starts down here but the rubberized part does wrap around and into the top of the holster and that that rubberized outer um, once you have the holster on and it's pressing between your body and your waistband that rubber really does kind of help hold that that firearm in place so it's not just all slick nylon so it doesn't just slip out and fall out of all the holsters that they sent me and the uh, the magazine pouch the build quality is very good for what you you know for what you'd expect for something like this the stitching is good there's you know the stitching doesn't run off the edges I checked pretty closely it's stitched very well around the outsides uh, same with these I think this one was the one that was worn the most um, just by the matter just by the nature that it fits such a small little comfortable gun um, I did also carry in this one quite a bit which is the uh, reinforced Glock model and you can see the the reinforced mouth and you can see the the stitching was pretty good I didn't have any problems with the quality didn't have anything fall apart didn't have anything you know poke out no no wearing through I'm not sure if this will eventually wear through I was kind of waiting for it to do so this um, this plastic part here that serves as the the reinforcement it's kind of 
bulging a little bit there, but it never did, never would break through. But one thing, and I'll talk about a little bit more later, is that they have a no questions asked lifetime warranty. So if it ever did happen, I could just send it back to them and they would replace it, you know, no questions asked. So that's one thing definitely in their favor as far as quality in the long run is concerned. And as I talked about before, they're cut tight to be um, to be a benefit, but not too tight where you end up having problems with your draw or something like that. Um, these are not one size fits all holsters, or even I'd say one size fits most. These are more like one size fits many. And even the 1911s have different holsters than like your Glocks or your XDs. So it can be a little bit different depending on the model you get. And the models are, are very clearly listed on the website. And one thing I did want to show though, this is obviously a standard 1911 uh, red gun made by ASP. And this here is a different 1911 model with a rail. And this railed model will still fit right in this holster the same as the non-railed. So you can fit a railed or a non-railed 1911 in their size 12. Um, and this is the reinforced, the, R, the RFT SS, so it has the, the sweat shield on it as well. What's the body clock for something like this? Pretty much anywhere. Your, you can do small of the back if you want to. You could do, um, you know, your standard three to four or, you know, like your seven to nine for your left-handed. Um, these are pretty good for your appendix carry type, type holsters, pretty much wherever you want to put your gun. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about natural retention. Um, again, a lot of your, your holster reviews do like your upside down shake test. Um, these are not bad as far as natural retention concern is concerned. I'm not squeezing on this and I'm kind of shaking this one around. This one is not coming out, but it's coming out pretty easily. And of course, in my drawing segment, I will show the difference between drawing and how it draws. Um, but I, I really give it credit to the fact that these are not one size fits all holsters and they are tighter stitched depending on the type of model that you get. And like I said, they do have that rubber um, that rubber portion around them, which gives them, um, for what they are, a very good natural, um, natural retention, which I was actually rather surprised about. Um, like I said, this one being used much more often, um, still has it, you know, eventually it'll slip out, but you have to remember these were meant to be, you know, worn on the body, which will pinch them, which will keep them, which will give them more retention. But for natural retention, it's not as bad as you'd think for such an open top and flexible holster. Okay, I am in some basic yoga pants here. Um, no belt, no stiff waistband. Um, and with the number two um, SS for the sweat shield, for the SIG 238 model here. And even with no real, you know, stiff waistband or anything like that, these are pretty elastic -y, it still retains very well. Um, even if, and even, I mean, you can see how sticky it is. Just trying to move, you know, move it around, move it back and forth. Um, even putting it like appendix, it kind of sticks out a little bit because I don't really have the body type for appendix carry, but even there, um, it has very decent natural retention by the nature of just how sticky it is with these little um, pod rubber types. And now I'm going to show a different type of um, clothing and how it works with a different type of holster. One of the questions I get, I get asked quite a bit is how I carry in a skirt or in a dress. This is just a um, elastic band skirt. It does have a drawstring on it, but I'm leaving it untied for, for just a little bit just to show you that um, you don't necessarily have to have it tied, but the tighter you can make it, the better. The less, the less likely you are of your holster drawing out with the gun with this type of a holster. 
um, but like I said, I'm going to leave it untied for right now. But this is the number 10 RTF, which is the reinforced opening with the Glock. And you see how this, without it being tied, this one did slip out a little bit because this is um, not as form-fitting as my yoga pants, so it has a little bit more of an opportunity to um, slide around just a little bit. So, and I, you really need to make sure that you put it against your skin and you don't have fabric between it because it'll move with the fabric because there's nothing to hold it in place. There's no belt to hold it in place. There's no clips to hold it in place. So if it's just between fabric and fabric, the holster will just move with the fabric. So it really has to be against something solid like your skin. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this drawstring to make it tighter on the holster so you can see a little bit of the difference. The holster stayed in place a little bit better. The skirt moved because it's a skirt. It's, you know, it's loose. But the holster stayed in place a lot better than, um, than with the drawstring untied. So if you wanted to do appendix carry, again, I do not have the body type for appendix carry, but um, going from something like this to um, even from concealment, and <laughs> no, I cannot conceal um, a Glock with well, the appendix carry, but um, something like that is certainly able to be done with a holster like this. Okay, now I'm just in standard jeans. I am not wearing a belt still, and I am carrying actually a full-size 5-inch 1911 with a rail, and this is the number 12 RTF SS, which is the reinforced mouth with the sweat shield. So I've got a lot of contact with my flesh <laughs> back there. And it still comes out very, very easily and holsters pretty easily. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of adjusting once you get it in there to make sure it's nice and deep. But um, with the reinforced mouth, it stays open pretty well. And you still have a fairly good concealment especially for, oh, I caught my shirt that time, a full-size 5-inch 1911. This one stays in place the best because it's so much material, so much surface area that is against my skin so that it really doesn't move. I mean, even when I draw it out or, or reholster it, it's, it's pretty stuck in there. And, uh, you know, moving and drawing or reholstering, like I said, you might not have the complete ease of a full open top, you know, a hard open top, uh, because this top is not reinforced all the way to the top. But for the versatility, I don't think it's really a problem. So there is the full size 1911 in the waistband, just a standard t-shirt and a standard pair of jeans. and drawing, no big deal. So what are my final thoughts on something like this? Um, now just remember, these are just my opinions. These aren't, you know, this isn't set in stone. What works for me may not work for other people or may not, you know, it directly apply to other people. But uh, things that I like, of course, one thing that I like is the versatility. You can wear this with several different outfits. You can wear this um, in several different, several different kinds of ways different parts of your body. Uh, I think the versatility is one of the greatest things about this holster. Um, <coughs> what stability it does has, have for what it is regarding its, you know, its natural retention, its stability on body with this kind of rubberized non-slip material is pretty good for, for what it is, you know, for being just a friction holster. And the material, again, like I said, that's one of its, its pros. It's one of the things that I do like about it, the way that it really is a non-stick material. And if you have, if it starts to get a little less sticky, you just hit it up with a little soap or just um, wipe it off and you can, you can refresh the stickiness, I guess you could say. Um, 
A dis dislike, of course, is the lack of any kind of attachment, which would make it not so good for certain applications. For instance, I would not recommend this particular holster for a um, you know a training, any or a competition, or any I IDPA or any anything where you're really expected to be drawing, shooting, putting it back in the holster. I would recommend this holster, and like this is just my opinion, for something you're just going to throw on, you're going to carry for the day, and you're not really going to play with it much. And that's what I'd recommend this for. For active shooting, I mean, yeah, of course you want to try it, you want to test it, you want to take it to the range and, and, you know, shoot and, you know, holster, work with an empty gun or a blue gun and work from the holster, of course, you're going to want to do that. But I, I personally would not use it for competition or training, um, you know, active training where you're going to work a lot from the holster. And that's, like I said, that's just me. I'd use a belt holster for that kind of thing. Um, I would, um, and for me, I can't wear it in certain outfits because um, just the retention isn't there. I would definitely recommend it for just your average quick day carry. You know, you're just getting up in the morning, you're looking for something comfortable to wear all day in a specific outfit. Yeah, go ahead, throw on the remora and, uh, you know, go with it. And of course, it's also great for when you can't wear a belt. I've talked about it before where you may not be able to wear this without um, without some kind of a tie, whether it be a, you know, a drawstring around the waist or something like that. I did not have much luck with just elastic waistbands the holster drew with the gun. So that's something to consider. If, um, I think it's pretty, it's a very good holster for your low profile appendix carry rigs, which is something where you just slip it in your waistband appendix carry and just go. I think that would, I would definitely recommend that for that kind of a thing. Now, if you just go to remoraholsters.com, you come to their website and it has um, all their products listed here on the left-hand side. You might not be able to see that. My camera doesn't do very well with zooming in on, on computer screens. But you have all your products listed here, your magazine holsters, your, um, your SS modification, meaning your sweat shield, um, your reinforced top holsters, uh, fitment charts. You can click, click on that and get <coughs> and download the fitness charts. There we go. And the fitness charts are very, very well laid out. Tells you exactly the number of holster, what it's made for, Derringers and small MI, um, semi, semi autos. And it will tell you right here whether or not it's lower profile or higher profile um, here with added light laser. So you can see exactly which holsters are fit for like your, you know, your, your little mounted lasers and that kind of stuff. And you can just go right through the fit list and see which fits your particular gun. And if you have any questions, you can certainly um, ask them. And also, when you go, to, and you can go to the online store. And at the online store, you can go ahead and purchase the holsters ver um, based upon what you're looking for: mag holsters, reinforced top holsters, and it can tell the size here. And it does say, like right here, 3238 Abreta. The type of the type of firearm that it would fit, and you can go through and purchase, you know, add to cart that particular holster. They're running about thirty dollars, twenty nine ninety five for a particular, you know, for one holster. As I said, they have a lifetime warranty, um, no questions asked, which is great. They're, I believe they're currently all in stock. I haven't heard anything saying that they aren't. So, you know, there's pretty much no wait time associated. As I said, the care is pretty, pretty easy. You can just wipe it down if it gets dirty. There's no particular, I guess, oiling or odd things you have to do to care for it. And uh, um, of course, my favorite button is the contact us. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and fill out their contact us form and ask them any questions you might have and I know that Alan is uh, pretty good at getting back to any anyone with any of their questions I've talked to him or emailed with him a few times 
So there you kind of have it. Um, I, I have not found a gun that they haven't been able to fit a holster for. So I guess if you, uh, if you have any particular questions about your gun, you could certainly go look at their fit chart and see which, you know, if they have a gun, you could search up in your, up in your search bar for whatever, Beretta, and there you go, Beretta Tomcat. And you could go through there looking for what you need and if you uh, if you don't see it, contact them, and I'm sure they could they could advise you appropriately.